career is less than three years. Right. Right. But you don't think about that when you're young. You just think you're going to be the man for a decade, you're going to Pro Bowls, and you're going to be the <laughs> best guy on the team. And then you get there and realize, like, man, I better be able to do special teams and uh, <laughs> yeah, be good friends with the, with the quarterback or something. Right. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Barcast. This is a show about just entrepreneurs and getting real with get real, getting real with uh, just uh, everything business and owning your own business and the life of an entrepreneur. And so we have a special guest on tonight or today. And uh, before we get started with that, though, I just want to introduce, introduce myself. My name is Brad, and this is Christian. And we got a pretty pretty awesome guest on today. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, and it's not just Christian; it's actually Cash. Here, cash money. Cash is here. The party can get started. Uh, now, nah, man, we got a, a, another great guest. Yes, uh, we got my friend Corey Bailey, who's going to hook it up. Shout out to all the other guests too, man. I mean, yeah, we've, I've I've been loving it so far. Well, of course long. you've been loving it because you were pushing for it forever. Doesn't mean last year we did thirty-seven episodes, and I think thirty-two because I, of them. Because you I you am effing on. sick of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. There's nothing but love here, baby. I'm a little you're, dressing, you're even dressing like me. <laughs> what is wrong with you? We're finishing each other's sentences. sentences. <laughs> <laughs> no. Today, uh, we're going to take a new angle. I know you like sports. Yep. So, um, my boy Corey's going to come out. He's got a, a background in football. Um, I mean, I have a little bit of a background in football, but not, it's not, not as legit. Not the same. <laughs> I don't think you can Google me. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and so we're going to tie in some sports and entrepreneurship. So what do you say we get started? I love it. Let's do it. All right, my man, Corey, come on down. <laughs> I know you hate this, don't you? You hate this. I'm working with it. I'm my working with it. Corey's in the house. What's up, man? Brad, good to see you. Here. Yeah. All right. So we got Corey Bailey in, and we got to get him his shot. Nice. This is for later. Yep. This is for later. Don't drink it now. We got to get him his shot. So... um. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Yeah? Yeah. You excited? I'm excited. Appreciate you coming on. So, um, I'm, it's, it's interesting because you and I, like, we've talked, but we've kind of talked on the fringes of business, so I'm actually excited to get deeper into your story because I feel like it has been a little bit, I don't want to say service level, but we've never actually gotten deep into the entrepreneurship yeah, side yeah. of things. So, why don't you kick it off um, by talking a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, so um, started off in the sports world, you know, uh, played a couple years after college. I went to UNC. Shout out to all the Tar Heels out there. We're having a rough basketball season, but I'm going to turn it around. Um, after that, I got an opportunity to get into um, a bar group. And if you know anything about the bar business, it's a tough business to be in. Um, obviously, you oh, do, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so seven young guys thinking that we could make a splash <laughs> in Chapel Hill with, you know, the restaurant and, and bar business. Um, so that was a, a really interesting journey that we can we can dive a little bit deeper into if you want. Oh, but, yeah, that's happening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then sort of learned a little bit more about business. Some of the things you should know maybe prior to going into that. Um, worked in health club management for a while, spun that into sort of a personal training and nutrition services business. Um, and more recently, I've been trying to use some of my recent tech chops um, to start an app. So those are sort of the three different entrepreneurial uh, ventures that I've jumped into. Uh, and I'm excited to talk about wh whichever one you want to. Yeah, we'll probably talk about all of them. Yeah, right? yeah. Getting all of I'm it. I'm all for it. Uh, so you alluded to um, sports as well. Mm -hmm. So what's your background as far as sports goes? So I, I was a wide receiver at the University of North Carolina, got an opportunity to go into camp um, and spend a, a preseason with the New York Jets. Nice. Um, My squad. Yeah. <laughs> well, not anymore. I was going to say, <laughs> you officially... Did you know that? <laughs> no, you, you've passed. You've moved along. That's yes. another story. Yeah, I moved yeah. along to the Ravens officially. So, All right. well, we need to talk about this story because he and I went to our first <laughs> football game. And it was Jets Ravens, and there it just go. so happened to be the game that Lamar Jackson broke the rushing record. Yeah, and he said if you if that if they lost, 
then he would officially yeah, be, yeah. make the transition. Yeah. Yes. And I was going to burn my Jets gear, but I actually just donated it to Goodwill. There you go. He couldn't bring himself yeah, to do so it, which I don't blame him. That's the way to do it. Yeah. It's the best thing to do. Give some pitiful Jets. It was for the Jets best, for, you know, <laughs> it was for, the best for both of us, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Sometimes things aren't meant to be. <laughs> so you were with the Jets. So you had a shot with the Jets. Yeah. So you know, that was a great experience for me, but... Um, you know, it was the year after 9-11, so I got to, to be involved in a lot of cool things. And you start to realize, hey, there's there's a world outside of football. So yeah. um, use some of those um, experiences, some of those connections, and, and just some of that spirit to, to transition it into entrepreneurship. Nice. All right. So um, you mentioned a few businesses. Were they all successful? I would say one of the three so far – the last probably still to be determined. Yeah. Um, but the bar business was tough for for a young guy like me. <laughs> so talk about that a little bit. So um, this was during your transition from football to your first entrepreneurial journey. Yep. So, you know, I kind of want to know a little bit about just kind of life after, you know, being a professional athlete yep. to, you know, really kind of diving into that because – um, and we kind of talked off air a little bit about that. Just being like, you know, making that transition was yep. probably a pretty big challenge because you're going from doing something that you only know one thing about mm -hmm. and then taking on something that's like completely different, being able to apply that to real world application. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, with anything, you sort of jump in with enthusiasm. Right. And this sort of go getter attitude like, hey, we're going to make it happen. Um, and unless you know a lot about that industry, you're sort of learning on the fly. I mean, it's, it's trial by fire and it's, it's, it's learning on the, on the job basically. Yeah. Do you think, do you, what do you attribute it to? Do you think it was a bad business? No, not or a, do I you mean, think, what, what would you have done differently? Well, first of all, there were a lot of chiefs in the room. Right? Okay. We had seven people in our, in our bar group. And so everyone had some input to give. Everyone had their yeah. experiences to go off of, but it's hard to get consensus when there's that many people. Um, and the other thing is, Seven, wow. yeah, the other thing is, you know, I mean, there's always a tiebreaker at least <laughs> we put our money into the business, <laughs> right? right? Yeah, so yeah. you're kind of strapped for cash at that point. Yeah. So everyone had to work in the business to also try to make some money from the business. Right. right? So, right. you know, it's just a real interesting mix of guys bartending and learning how to DJ and working the door and promoting. And so we're all trying to figure out how to make money as employees of the business, but also as owners of the business. Um, and I went into it without reading a business plan, without knowing what the long-term objective was, you know, with, it, it just was something that I feel like I should have done more homework on. Yeah. Um, and I won't say like never go into friends into business with your friends, but do your homework before you do that. You know, uh, we're all still really great friends. You know, we, we've introduced each other to someone else's wife or met each other's kids or been in each other's weddings. But, um, it's just something that when you're young, you, you do with all this enthusiasm and not much knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, you talk a lot about, so Brad in his, on his YouTube channel, shout out to Odin the chaos. Don't say I didn't like and subscribe. Uh, he talks a lot about due diligence, right? When researching your stock, like a lot of people, when they pick stocks are like, Oh, I heard this from somebody or whatever. There's really no sort of framework behind the, the way they pick it, but it's the same thing. It sounds like what you're saying is like, just do your due diligence and make sure, you know, nothing's guaranteed, but make sure you do the work before yeah. you make the decision. Yeah. Learn a little bit about the industry you're, you're thinking about getting into, learn a little bit about, you know, the, the competitive landscape, you know, even even in the bar business, right? You should know what what else is out there. What are kids going to? You know, what do they enjoy? And then use that knowledge to sort of say, all right, this is a worthwhile venture. So then, after that, you had the opportunity to be on a like a apprentice style yeah, show. It was the it was a real kind of cheesy local reality show. <laughs> But I tell you, I learned a whole lot about business on it. Um, shout out to everybody who was on the... The, the entrepreneurs? The entrepreneurs, right? <laughs> like, that's the name of the show. Um, and I, it gave me an opportunity to meet people in the Raleigh-Durham area, local business community, who were already out there doing it, who maybe wanted to try something else. Um, I'm talking real estate agents, uh, business owners, salespeople, kids straight out of college. Um, so it was a real good mix of like, you know, the demographic was spread out and we got to learn, you know, learn some business acumen and 
put those to some challenges and right. do some marketing, some branding, some promotion. Like it was, it was a fun experience. Yeah. So then, is that the, the health care company or the health club company? Health club company. So comes after that. At that time, after I transitioned out of the bar business, I was um, essentially working out at a, a local club. Shout out to everybody from O2 Fitness back in the day and, and locally <laughs> now. Um, but I asked, hey, do you guys need help? She brought uh, uh, brought me on as a closer, which is the person who shuts the gym down. And what happened was... Oh, I, I thought was, you were like the closer, like <laughs> right? somebody needed a sale. Du- yeah, <laughs> double entendre, right? Like, but seriously, I was selling more memberships in the evening than the club was selling throughout the day. Wow. And when they would have their GM meetings, I said, how are you guys selling all these memberships? And I got this new guy it's selling all these memberships. So um, fortunately, I was able to get their flagship club as a director of membership sales wow. nine ten months That's after awesome. that became the gm of that club and was there for two years um, and then just really had an opportunity to take what i had learned in those three years and put them into a new business um, if you know anything about the anytime fitness model it's basically here's your key fob here's the box come when you feel like it right. um, so i had the opportunity to be sort of the in-house training arm of what they did at two area locations so it was a fun experience sort of building that from the ground up um, building a client base bringing on more trainers a nutritionist and and get the ball rolling there so that's the one i would say was probably a, a huge success really yeah um so i have a, a hypothesis and you're probably the one to answer this you're qualified to answer this do you think that the more ads you have <laughs> the higher <laughs> percentage of sales so like for every two abs there's probably some correlation between the amount of abs you have and the increase in sales year over year nobody cares how, how many, many abs, abs you got you. i got six or seven <laughs> <laughs> i got that i maybe got that odd one there at the bottom <laughs> still still <laughs> six or trying, seven man look I'm, I'm trying to keep up with three so kids oh two fitness day you probably had like 12 abs man at least at least 12. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Brad. You know he's... Oh, yeah. Oh, solid. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. No, they, they yeah, like my a, pitch. No, it's these green eyes. Oh, uh, by the way, I was a wide receiver at uh, <laughs> UNC. At UNC. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what working in the health club industry taught me. Everybody's goals everybody is different. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people want to just... I want to look as sexy as humanly possible. Some people are like, hey, I'm getting up there. I want a few extra years with my grandkids, Yeah. right? You have to figure out what everyone's motivation is. Mm. And that's that's either as a health club owner, salesperson, trainer, you got to know why they want to be there. Right. So I used to ask people, you know, why, why today? Why did you come in today to check this place out? I love that. I that's, love that. That's everything that, like, this bar cast is kind of surrounded around is just, like, building that relationship. Yeah. And that, that feeds right into that, you know? Yeah, for sure. And also, I think that's the trap that salespeople – fall into so if you're a salesperson listen don't sell until you know what their need is yes you know like salespeople, and i used to have this run in bars where i'd have reps come in telling me what i needed or what i wanted and, yeah. and they didn't ask the fundamental question is like what are your pain points yes. what are you looking to do yes and then frame it around that rather than saying like assuming that you know i think that message is powerful for for health industry anything and for business in yeah. general yeah for sure if we could stop there. No, I'm just I was going to say, yeah, well, <laughs> that was nice talking to you, man. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I just, it's pretty incredible just how building relationships with people impacts your business no matter what industry you're in. It does mm-hmm. not matter. And, and just how much that just trumps everything. Well, so obviously I know Corey a little bit better than you. And so you'll, you'll come to know that Corey just – and naturally connects with people. Like, I don't even know how you, you, I bet I can ask something like, I need, well, I need a mechanic. You probably have a mechanic. Like anything I, I would you. need. I got you. I, yeah, I got you. He's like, I got you. I got you. I need a new pair of jeans. I got you. I got this guy who um, manufactures I, say, oh, I seen denim. down in Raleigh Denim. <laughs> um, but relationships, we, we preach on relationships, but I would yeah. imagine relationships are at the core of, of what you're about. Well, they matter. I mean, no, no matter what business you're in, like everybody has a life outside of their work or a life outside of their business. And you got to get to the core of who people really are. Um, especially if you're, you know, if you're in sales or if you're going to be asking, um, for somebody to support you or, or 
you know, fight for fight for this deal for you. Like you got to know why it matters to them. Um, so you do have to do sort of a deeper dive in your needs analysis and be more of a solution seller than a than a product seller. You know, so yeah, building relationships is it's it's a human need, right? Air, mm -hmm. water, and and companionship. Yeah. So how? Um, let's talk about sports. Let's segue into sports. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, I want to get. I want to touch on the. The, the money issue. I want to touch on how, how people get rich and then they lose it. But, but first, talk about how sports has helped you in business and in entrepreneurship. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, sort of touch on that relationship point, right? Like sports brings you into contact with a wide range of people, football especially for me. I mean, I play with guys who are big, burly, and from the country, and guys who are fast, quick, and from the deep south. Yeah. chasing rabbits and stuff <laughs> right so you get to meet a, a pretty wide range of people um when you play sports coaches fans um players and teammates and, and opponents right uh, so it gives you a good sort of um relationship building toolbox mm -hmm. the other thing it does is you have to work really hard in sports at some point nobody can coast by on god-given talent right at some point you got to be in the film room at some point, you got to get in the reps. Yeah, put the work in. You know, we we all we talked about mo Mamba mentality, right? Even if you're given all that talent, the thing that's going to separate you is how hard you're willing to work. Um, and being a Carolina guy, there's always like a quote that jumps out to me in the forward of Mia Hamm's book: how Anson Dorrance would drive by the practice field and she'd be out there by herself running running sprints. Wow. And it's it's about how hard you work when nobody's watching. Yep. Right. So you think about that in sports. And everybody thinks, oh, well, this guy in business got, got rich overnight. His business is an overnight success. No, that dude was putting in the reps when nobody was watching on understanding the landscape of the industry, on this idea is not working. I got to pivot. This this product is not is not going where we needed to go. Like, we've been fighting for this thing for a long time, but we got to get rid of it and move to the next product. Right. It takes a lot of those risks and decisions and, and groundwork to really see the the fruit that comes from that that work yeah that's awesome yeah i love the, that the and and it's interesting as you're saying that i'm going to tie in the other topic which is uh athletes who lose their wealth yeah. right and and the what i would imagine i haven't been in that position but I, what i would imagine is you're talking about the work like they now have all this money and i'm sure a lot of people having their hand out and they're not doing the work. They're not putting in the work. And they just think if I put money out there, it's going to come back. Right. Um, and you talked a little bit about kind of thinking that the money's always going to come and it might yeah. turn off. So you talk about that a little bit. Yeah, no. I mean, when you're young and, and you're thinking for the next season, right, not even like the year, what's going on this season, you know, people don't, need, people don't know. Like, you only get paid during the year. In the off season, That's you don't really point. get paid. Like, you have to – have some business or at least some some money smarts to think all right this money is going to shut off during the summer right and i need to make sure that i'm getting to the next season or i need to put some of this away because the average nfl you know career is less than three years right right but you don't think about that when you're young you just think you're going to be the man for a decade you're going to pro bowls and you're going <laughs> to be the best guy on the team and then you get there and realize like man i better be able to do special teams and you know, <laughs> Yeah, be good friends with the with the quarterback or something. Right. Um, so yeah, it's it's a hard transition from not having anything and then having a lot. What's that? What's that like? So because you played at the CFL for a couple years, right? Yeah, I mean it's you know it's funny because the NFL the, the paychecks are way bigger yeah, than the right, CFL, right? right? right. They, people would joke up there they call it the CFL because it means come for less. <laughs> 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 and the NFL was not for long, right? So, you know, you think about getting that first big paycheck and you're like oh my god what am i going to do with this right you're what 22 23 22 23 years old i mean i i, I call my dad like i don't i can't believe this that i'm going to get this kind of check and he's like check the pay period out it's like two weeks i'm like i'm gonna get another check like this in two weeks <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous <laughs> um but yeah and then you know guys that make it for a period of time then they're buying mom a house and yeah getting mom a new car and, you know, bringing my girlfriend up to live with me. And then they don't realize when that money turns off, the mortgage still has to be paid. Right. The car payments still have to be made. 
the utilities are super high for a big house like this. Like that's not stuff that we think about when we're young. So you have to plan for that. You have to prepare for that. And you have to have a, a way to sort of reset your expectations. Right. Um, yeah. and, then, and then grow from where you're at. That's crazy too. And I can't imagine also, I mean, if you play D one ball, it's safe to say you were really good in, in high school, yeah. right? So you've gotten a lot of attention. College, you get a lot of attention if you're able to go to the next level. Even if it's CFL, I don't care what it is. Yeah. If you're able to play professionally, and then if it is only two and a half, three years, now all of a sudden, if that does turn off, like what happens? I can't imagine the fall that happens mentally yeah. from – from having that happen to you with maybe no plan B, that's got to be tough when everybody's doing things for you and helping you out, yep. and, and then all of a sudden it's, it's just gone. Well, yeah. when everything's yeah. and everything's come almost, I don't want to, I don't want to say easy, but like when you've kind of been the the best athlete on your team through childhood all the way maybe through high school and even college, and then you get to the NFL and it's just like it's a whole different no no pun intended ball game, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's it's definitely a an eye opener when you go from level to level, right? Like playing against, you know, non athlete, athletic guys or bad teams in high school, you can shine. Um, even in college, like you realize everybody was a four and five star in their school, right? So you have to up your game. You have to be willing to do a little bit more. And it's the same in business, right? Like yep. you're not going to be the only, the only, you know, business on the block. People are going to, be before you people are gonna come after you people are gonna do it differently do it better maybe and you have yep. to be able to step your game up um and that's the same in sports um but you're right it's a humbling experience to have sort of that trajectory and people sort of patting you on the back and being your fans and writing you letters and asking for your autograph and then you know you, you get a few years removed from that and every once in a while a dad will walk up and say Hey, you know who this guy is? And the kid will be like, no, I have absolutely no idea who this guy is. That guy was a great wide receiver. You should get his autograph. And the kid's like, oh, I guess my, <laughs> guess my dad wants me to get your autograph. But it's, you know, you have to you have to humble yourself to say, hey, you know, maybe I'm not the best thing since sliced bread. Maybe I do need to go back to the drawing board. Maybe I do need to reinvent myself a little bit and and have a new career, a next, a next you know, act, so to speak. Yeah, so in, in that vein – Thinking back, so like, what's what's one piece of advice that you would give to um, entrepreneurs? And like, if you just had to go back and tell yourself something, what do you think the biggest piece of advice would be? Just to keep going. Like, you're gonna take your lumps, you know. Um, and it's easy when, when we see people out there that are successful. It's easy to say, I can't get there. It's not meant for me. Right. Um, I'm not about this. But if you have a passion for it. And you have a uh, you know the energy to to get up and do it. Like just keep doing it. Like um, you're gonna have setbacks. You're gonna have people t doubters and people telling you like, no, you can't do that. You're a jock. You don't need to be. You don't need to be trying to be a entrepreneur. What's, you know what's that about? But for all those detractors, there's gonna be somebody in your corner saying, absolutely do that. Absolutely try that. Absolutely you can make it. Listen to those voices. That's what mm -hmm. I'll say. You know, keep keep those other voices in the back of your head as motivation. But the people that are telling you, yeah, that's a great idea. Go for it. Let those people push you along as well. Damn, I, I like that. that. Yeah, me I'll too. I'll cheers to that. Hell yeah, let's do it. All right. Yeah, man. So um, we are now here at the part of our bar cast where we talk, or we do the uh, the people's toast, hashtag people's toast, everybody <laughs> who's out there. And um, you want to give it a little bit more of an explanation? Yeah, so... Um, we do a toast competition. The, the explanation is easy. We do a toast competition because we're at a bar, and I come. We don't know any of our toasts, but I come with an original toast because that's what I do. I do original creative content. <laughs> Brad usually Google searches or he puts out something on Instagram to ask his friend to do it for him. <laughs> but with that said, um, it's our opportunity to sort of close this thing out and cheers. So would you like to do the honors? Yeah, sure. So I have an original toast too. Good, sounds good. It's sounds short, like real man. It's short and sweet, and um, positive vibes, isn't it? Positive vibes. Right. Little, I love maybe, it. maybe maybe a little comedy in there too. So, to the people of the world and the beautiful struggle, to the bedwetters, the trendsetters, and the never forgetters. Nice. I like it. Cheers. Cheers. Salute.
did it. He did it. He made the fatal mistake. He drank it all. We got oh, two. Oh, no. Let me back up. Go for it. All right. We got him. We got him. That's how you're supposed to take a shot. Though, right? <laughs> it is. It is. It is. Yes. All right. So you can go ahead. All right. So mine is here's the nights we'll never remember and the friends we'll never forget. Love it. Cheers. I've, I've heard I've heard that one before. Listen, so, so, so unoriginal. Last year. So unoriginal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fill me up again. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's going, just, I'm doing it the right turn. way here, guys. Come on. If I was a real jerk, I'd fill the whole damn glass. Yeah, he's, he's giving me. <laughs> I'm helping you out. He's helping me out a lot. <laughs> All right. You ready for mine? Let's go. I like to do mine in honor of guests, so this is for you. And he does have a six-pack. <laughs> <laughs> Check out his IG, <laughs> at Corey Bailey. Is that right? At Corey, at Corey Bailey? Bailey 12. K Bailey 12. K Bailey 12. All right. I mean, I'm not going to throw your age out there, but damn. Seven packs. Yes. How do right. you, you really feel about Corey? Oh, man. <laughs> hey, it's mutual. It's mutual. <laughs> I'm All right, so if you want six packs abs, you got to make it hurt. A party ain't a party. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> we'll edit it in post. Yeah, we're going yeah, right. to <laughs> right, edit right, that right, one, right. Dave Bob. All right, <laughs> take two. If you want six pack abs, you got to make it hurt. But a party ain't a party. Until it's DJ No Shirt. Hey, <laughs> DJ No Shirt. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, on IG, you're going to tell the story of DJ. This is DJ No Shirt. It, yes. We forgot to talk so about that. a party ain't a party without DJ No Shirt. Shout out to and Avalon. I totally screwed All up. my kids from Avalon. <laughs> but uh, we're going to talk about DJ No Shirt immediately after we're done with this. Okay. That story is epic. Yeah. Before this cast is over, we have to talk about it, right? You want to talk about it Let's now? just do it. Let's right, do it. Let's do they got to know about this. They got to know about this. Story. DJ No Shirt. Is that your DJ name, true or false? That is my... Don't, don't even... It's your DJ name. Don't <laughs> that try is to my say DJ Corey alias. DJ <laughs> kind of bullshit. <laughs> I look, I got on the mix CDs was DJ KB. That was my official... What were they chanting in the club? What are they chanting in the club? Answer. DJ No Shirt. DJ No Shirt. All right, so tell the story. You know, the name, the name is, is given to you, right? <laughs> yes. So I mentioned that we were in the bar business. We were owners, but we had to work in the club to make money, right? Yep. What'd the, you do to make money? The job that I loved the most <laughs> and that got paid usually the most was the DJ. So I taught myself how to DJ. We had a little, you know, little CD turntables, crossfader lights. Mm -hmm. Sounds and all of that, okay. right? <laughs> the club at a certain point would get so so hot. So I was so hot for KB. Brick walls. <laughs> so what? So it wet gets with hot. perspiration, right? So it's either have a drenched shirt, like you know, like you've been running sprints for an hour, or you come out of it, and it's out of what. Out of the shirt. Right? <laughs> I'm in my mid twenties at the time. Best shape of my life. You know, he just mentioned that I've got an ab or two extra. <laughs> so I'd come out of the shirt, right? I didn't think it was would hurt anyone's feelings, right? At a certain point, I find out that the patrons of the club have given me a new a new DJ name. I'm no longer DJ KB. I am now DJ No Shirt. I find this out. When the chant begins. <laughs> so at, at that point in the night, when I came out of the shirt, the chant starts, DJ, no shirt. <laughs> Fast forward, it would, the chant would start before the shirt would come off, oh, so that the hilarious. shirt would come off. Mm. How many awesome. relationships were strained because uh, the no, girls right? were taking out DJ no shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was a little bit older than the college crowd at that time. But. Oh, they were. Oh that didn't God. matter. It didn't matter. No. Now, what I want to point out is how many people actually were taking their shirt? I love how he's like, only somebody with abs is like, it was so hot up in the club. <laughs> That's what I got to say. Some, of the, big, no some of the big guys on the team would take their shirts off, too. So. Yep. <laughs> That's probably true. Equal too. opportunity sweatiness <laughs> in Avalon at those Follow times. Follow DJ No Shirt. I think that was a perfect story to end with. Yep. Corey, thank you so awesome. much. Thanks for having me. For, man. for coming on, man. I really appreciate your time and, and you know, sharing your stories with everybody out there. 
Uh, you know, what I would like to do is just kind of, you know, like I said, thank everybody for tuning in. And if you would like to uh, continue to see content such as this, make sure that you're tuning in every Sunday. We air a new, new podcast or new barcast, let's just say. And if you want to like and subscribe, we certainly appreciate it. What do you got going on in, in your life, Corey? Uh, trying to trying to make some waves here in, in Baltimore, trying to do some good um, with the kids of Baltimore. Haven't given up on the, the app yet. Um, but it's it's sort of in pause mode right now, where I try to figure out how to do some good here in the community. All right, where can uh, where can we where can we find you? Um, Instagram at kbailey12. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. And always remember, if you don't drink Jack, you're an ass. You're an ass. <laughs>